Good morning, family. Good morning, All right. Today, we're going to talk about something that's, that's been important in my life for many years. Uh, how many of you have, uh, how many of you have had that thing in your life that it bothers you? It, it doesn't go away. You pray about it day after day after day. And you're like, Lord, this is so unfair. I just don't understand. Why won't you take this thing away from me? Why does this memory have to keep haunting me? Why, why does, why does a, a trouble I had as a youth still follow me? What is all this about? I'm your child. Why would you let this happen? And I've got to, I'm going to read to you today about the Apostle Paul and what he learned about this. So if you could turn the channel, turn the channel, turn the, <laughs> turn, turn the page, uh, turn to second chapter, turn, turn to Corinthians, <laughs> second Corinthians chapter 12. Okay. Holy Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second chapter, uh, second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse seven. And it says, and lest, I should, uh, and lest I should exalt above measure by the above. This is a phrase that the Apostle Paul uses twice in one verse. Lest I be exalted above measure. So the Apostle Paul wanted desperately not to be exalted above measure. Okay? He said, lest I be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. A messenger, a, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it would depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you. For, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities and the power of Christ, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For what, when I am weak, I am strong. So, so the Apostle Paul deals with this thing. Nobody knows what it is. Could have been an accusation. It could have been a, 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 a physical disease. It could have been from all the scars of all the beatings he's taken. But whatever it is, it, was, it, was, it seemed like it was draining him. And uh, so he, he says that, that, that because of the revelations that he received, because of the, the supernatural things that he learned from the Holy Spirit, there had to be something coming to his life that would keep him from being big-headed and, and being prideful. And for him, it was a thorn in the flesh. And you'll notice when you get, when you get deep, deep revelation that there, it will come with something that's difficult so that you will not be exalted by this amazing knowledge and wisdom that God has given you. And for him, it was a thorn in the flesh. And, um, of course, he, he realized it, was, it came from Satan. This wasn't, this wasn't from the world. This is from Satan. And he said, concerning this thing, I pleaded um, that, to the Lord three times that it would depart from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, when you when I first read this thing, I thought, I thought that the Lord was getting on to him. Well, look, my grace is sufficient for you, and that's all there is to it. So you so you deal with it. But I begin to I begin to kind of seek out what the word grace means. Turns out that grace has to do with something that's given to you that is so valuable that there's no way you could ever afford it. There's nothing that you could do that could earn this thing. 
no matter how much money you have, no matter what kind of great things you do, you could not deserve this gift. And for the Apostle Paul, I think the Lord was re telling him to remind himself that he has received a great gift, a gift not only of salvation, but the, but the honor of sharing that salvation with others. Not, not, just being, not just being born again into the kingdom of God, but becoming a, an actual child of the Father himself. There are so many gifts and so many blessings that come from this grace that I cannot think that Jesus used this as a, as a form of discipline. This had to be something gracious and beautiful to remind Paul that what he that that what what he has gotten is better than than this thorn. Oh, that's good. And oh, that's uh, good. thank you. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, therefore he said, uh, therefore I most gladly. He said, therefore I am most. Gladly, and I looked that up. That means I celebrate. I was most gladly. Uh, I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In other words, in, uh, see. Oh, I missed something. Let's see. It says. Uh, uh, I missed something here. Okay, it says uh, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that, 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 that word perfect, that means flawless. That means my strength is made flawless in your weaknesses. And, and so the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, most gladly, I will celebrate and, uh, and I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of God the power of Christ may rest upon me. So he's going to praise God for these infirmities because he knows that this glorious power of Christ is going to rest upon him. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you is this: those things that keep bothering you and you want them out of your life, those may be the very things that cause the Holy Spirit of God to rest upon you uh, and make your life more valuable, give you more strength, uh, allow you to touch more people's lives. Therefore, this is, and the last verse says, therefore, I will take pleasure in my infirmities. And pleasure, you know what that means? That means I will think very good. He said, uh, therefore, I will think very good in my infirmities. I will think well of them. I take pleasure in the infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. So, so this, this, once again, the Apostle Paul received this amazing revelation uh, about the fact that he's weak means that he is spiritually strong. Uh, you know, physically weak, spiritually strong. For him, that was the case. But um, but listen, when you go through things and you're like, "Why is this happening? Why 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 am I being abused? Why why is why is my mate not listening to me? Why 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 is that person at work always trying to drive me crazy?" And, and, and you, you ask yourself these questions and you pray that God will take that away. But that's there to make you a better person, to make you a more powerful Christian. Thank you.